start coming across with the money. And if they pay me, I'll do, I'll like, I'll like split it. I'll, I mean, I'll give some to the college, like for a scholarship fund or something, or whatever they want to do. And maybe, you know, I don't know, prize for best website designed in this class or something. And then, of course, a cut for me, too, you know. But, and then I'll make like commitments, like once per class, I'll zoom in on the label, you know. Uh, one, once per class, I'll say, I'm not really sure how to do this. Boy, I better take a drink of this <laughs> because this will hydrate me as well as give me just the right amount of kick, I believe their slogan is. I did see, and, and if, if, if the Mountain Dew people happen to watch this, I would do it for a free case of the new, I think it's mango pineapple with coconut water flavor. And I have no idea what coconut water is. I've, I've lived half a century and coconut water only was invented like last year. All right. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't get it. I mean, there's been coconuts forever. Why coconut water now? But yeah, just yeah, someone finally cracked it open. It's like, oh my God, this is the best stuff ever, you know. Um, and, uh, but I like anything that tastes that, that mango flavored. I mean, mango flavored is the best. There is, in Oberlin, there is a cowhouse creamery. And they have a, it's called Ginger or Marianne. It's a mango ginger flavored uh, sorbet. That is my favorite. It got, it, it's to the point where when I come in, if like there's someone that's been working there, it's like, sorry, we don't have it today. You know, it's like, darn it. You know, so... Um, that's correct. Did, did both of them go there? Or? Okay. Yeah, I, I knew at least one of them did. I couldn't recall if, if, if both of them did or not. But yeah, it's like I love cow house. I mean, anything, you see, the, the, the trick is, is that anything you get at cow house is good. All right. Um, but the mango uh, uh, ginger sorbet is the best. And uh, I am going to post this video to cow house's wall on Facebook and see if I can get like a free scoop out of the deal. All right, for mentioning them. That'll be my pilot test uh, for this plan. Anyhow, back to business. See, we left off last time looking at colors and determining like what good colors are. And one thing I hear a lot from folks in this class and other classes is, just close yeah, just close the door. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Uh, I. Uh, I hear from people in this class and in other classes a lot, they'll say something to the effect of, I'm not very artistic for web design. Well, okay, I can respect that. Everyone has their own abilities and all that. But we're, we're not talking about like painting the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, all right? You don't have to make artistic masterpieces. You have to make things that look good and enhance the communication. And I think anyone that puts a little effort into it can get at least that good. To be sure, Everyone, you know, web development has a technical aspect and a design aspect. And the further you go along, when you get into things like PHP and JavaScript and ASP.NET, the technical part becomes important. It's, it's, it's a programming language, a full-blown, full-fledged programming language. So the technical part is nothing to sneeze at. So people that are great at design need to brush up on those skills. People that are maybe good on the technical and need to brush up on the design skills. And again, you just need to be good enough at it. You know, when you're looking for a job or whatever, your skills, your strengths are probably what they're going to sell you to an employer. But being able to sort of compensate for the weaknesses and at least do an okay job with those, I think, you know, takes you far. So at any rate, we were talking with CSS and we were talking about a, uh, using the color wheel. So I'm going to bring up the example we had last time, and I'm going to try to make it look good. Previously, uh, previously, yeah, <laughs> we had um, I was demonstrating stuff. So I was just showing like, okay, you can make this color, you can make this this color, you can make that that color. And I wasn't really paying too close attention to, you know, actually how it looked. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to try to make it, you know, look at least good. And see, I think, 
is that with a teensy bit of effort, we can take a web page that was just the plain, no style whatsoever, and make it look pretty good. Not great, not a work of art, but we can make it look decent and we can enhance the communication of it. So let me go down and download the example from last time. and encourage them. I, I, I was just thinking, I'm just thinking I'm, I accidentally walked in the junior high class by mistake today, this morning. Um, here we have this, and again, I didn't really make any effort to make it look good. I just threw colors up there just to demonstrate some things. Well, let's go and let's find the color scheme generator. And, well, we'll try this one. Uh, uh, we'll try it in good old Chrome, man. All right, here we go. All right, uh, let's see. Um, Let's go with a monochromatic green color scheme. Yeah, let's go with that. I don't know why. Again, monochromatic means all colors or shades of a particular color. All right. Uh, we could use complementary colors if we wanted to, but we don't feel that advanced today. So we're going to go <laughs> just, just with this. Now, as we put up over the color, notice it shows me the hex code. Very good. And we can go and we can put that in. So again, even if you don't understand the whole spiel about the, uh, uh, about the color code, um, you can use it. You know, just remember to put a pound sign in front of it, then put those six digits. And even, let's see. That shows you an example of what it could look like. Yeah. And somewhere here, I think it will show you the list of colors, so you can just copy and paste. Yeah. Now, thing it shows us uh, <laughs> is a vision simulation. So how? Here with someone that is colorblind. So, red and green colorblind, which is one of these two, I think. Oh, wait a minute. Colorblind with a green retinal accent, red green hue discrimination. I think that's the one. So, that. Alright, so it's more hacky, kind of, I, I guess I would say, than, than, a, than a green. And when I, that's okay. I, I, I would see that as long as the contrast is sufficient, that, that should be fine. Uh, so, let's... We should ask them. How does... How does uh, 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 in North Ridgeville, how does that look? I'm sorry, I, I, my, your name escapes me. Uh, how does uh, that look, th that color scheme to you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
doesn't work? Uh, okay. How about this? Does it look, um, uh, give, give a thumbs up if, if it, it would be an acceptable one. Give a thumbs down if you think it's hideous. Thumbs up. Okay. All right. Good enough. Good enough. All right. Let's go and let's do this. And we can approach this any different ways. Now, the other thing to remember is white and black you sort of get for free. All right. I mean, you can use a white, you know, you could use white and black on anything, and it doesn't really matter. And and other neutrals too. You you know, gray I guess doesn't always go, but white and black definitely sort of goes with everything. The one thing to remember is that through CSS, we're going to learn how to like make everything on the page look the way we want it to. So we could, in theory, make everything on the page a different color and use a different color scheme. Now, do we want to? No. That's where the design aspect comes in. It's almost like, and inevitably, when people first started to learn this, it's like, wow, I can do that? Well, let me try to do this. And, and sometimes there's a little bit of overkill. It's almost it's like going to an all-you-can-eat buffet, right? It's like, you're not getting your money's worth unless you're stuffed and sick on your way out, all right? So, Kind of the same idea here. Wow, if I can make everything a different color, I'm going to make everything a different color. Well, that's probably not the best strategy. All right, the best strategy is to say, how can I use color to indicate additional meaning, help the user visually organize the page? It's interesting. We've done this um, experiment in other classes. Is we've looked up like a newspaper from another country and simply by the colors and the size of the font and all that, we can like kind of tell what's what. All right, we won't do that now. I was going to do that now, but that, that may be for another day. All right, but you can tell that even if you can't read the words, you get a sense of how it's organized. You know, the biggest headline is probably the most important thing, right? If the whole page is white and there's a box on the side that's shaded gray, there's something special about that. It might be an advertisement, all right? It might be a, um, an aside, like additional information about an article. It might be uh, information about the author of the article. But you can tell that that's somehow different than the main body of the text. So I'm going to go start out making the body page this color. So let me go into my HTML document. Let me get rid of all the CSS. All right, let's save this and then view it. There we go. All right. Now, we might want to do something like differentiate the navigation from everything else. All right. We might want to differentiate the page heading or the banner from everything else. So let's go in and let's put some contrasting colors with that. So I'm going to put header. Background. Did you see their parody of the, um, the, uh, the uh, uh, what's, what's the guy's name for the Seahawks that says, I'm only here because I won't get fined? They did a parody of, of Richard Sherman and him doing an interview. Yeah, it's it kind of funny. Mar Marshawn Lynch. Yeah, right. I don't know about 
it's the acoustic thing. I swear I hear everything. Um, I, like, I had a student in uh, the web development class last year that pounded the keys when he was taking notes. It would be like, boom, boom. And it was like, it, was, it, it's like it sounds petty, but it was so distracting, you know? It's like, geez. <laughs> All right, so we put a contrasting color on the header. And... Oh, this is also an IE issue, and we'll talk about that later. All right. Let's just close completely out of IE and go and open it up in Chrome. All right, there we go. All right. And then let's just, for to finish our thought, let's make the navigation. Let's make the navigation a third color. And let's make the navigation, let's just go right down the line, I guess. Let's make it that color. Uh-oh. What do you think that means? I made the navigation that color, and it made all that stuff that color. What do you think I did wrong? Where's my mistake? I probably didn't close the nav tag, because what this is thinking is, hey, from here to the end of the page is my nav section. So if I look at it, sure enough, there we go. No end nav tag. You can almost start, based on what's wrong, you can almost sort of figure out where your mistake is. In that case, it treated everything like the nav section. What does that mean? Well, the nav section doesn't know the na end of the nav section, so the nav section was never closed. The other thing that you could see is if I spelled nav wrong, if I typoed on that, we should get the same sort of thing. All right, because again, it doesn't know that that's supposed to be the end of the nav section. But if I do this, then, all right, we're like that. All right, we're going to spend the rest of the semester learning stuff about CSS. But I do want to do like two or three little things here that I think will enhance the way this page looks. Because we're moving in the right direction, definitely. But, you know, we're not there yet. All right, this still isn't that great of a looking page. One thing that we can do is we can control the width of our different elements. All right. Um, by default, all of the block tags, what are block tags? Nav, header, section, div, paragraph. In other words, when you have two block tags, they get stacked on top of each other like blocks. They're not alongside of each other, which are called inline tags. All of the block tags, by default, are 100%. They'll take up the full width. So as I make the window smaller, it continues to take up the full width. There's just less width. All right? So I can go in here and say header, nav, footer, section. I can give a width of 600 pixels. One way that you can give a width of something is with an absolute number of pixels. We'll learn other techniques, but this is a good starting point. I did header, section,
So now it doesn't go the full length of the page. It goes 600 pixels. It would be nice to center this. All right. We can center this by saying margin 0 pixel auto. We'll talk about this in more detail. Essentially, this goes like the, this goes clockwise. There's four margins on the element, right? There's the top, the right, the bottom, the left margin. If zero, and then you repeat again. Zero on the left. And all will set. And I put this on each of my black bags. It's going to center these guys. All right. Now we can do a few other things. What a header is right on the edge of this. Do you remember a little bit of space? It's padding. So I can do padding. <laughs> Ten PX. All right. And again, it gave a little bit of space. Notice that it's wider now. All right, we'll talk about what's called the box model in more detail, but the panning gets added to the width. All right, so in other words, that's now 620 pixels wide because 10 on the left, the 600 width, and then 10 on the right. So that's 620. And I kind of think that looks good, so I'm going to leave it like that. I may even make it a bigger padding. Pardon me? Why not 500? Yeah. I don't know. That probably, probably would be over padded. All right. Yeah, there. I kind of like that. Now, we can specify the paddings individually. Because I simply said padding, it gave me the padding, again, in all directions, like margin, top, right, bottom, left. I can specify padding dash top and so on. This is something we'll talk about later in the term. There is sort of shorthand for some of these properties. For example, I heard people talking in lab about using background dash color as opposed to background. Both of those are legit. Background is a shorthand property. All right. That is, I can specify the color and other attributes about the background in one style rule, style rule, where background color sim only sets the background. All right? And just like padding, I can specify the padding in all four directions, or if I say padding, it applies for all four of them. Or again, the alternative would be to set them individually. Now, the one thing I don't like, we're not in too bad a shape here. I, I, we could do something cool like add a border to this. Let's do that. Border, again, is another example of one of these shorthand properties where I can specify several attributes all at once. All right. The one thing that doesn't look well designed is that list of links. All right, that kind of looks hokey. Now, here's the thing. I could say, let me take them out of the list. That's not the right answer. All right, these are a navigation is a list of links. So a UL tag and an LI tag is the perfect way to designate your navigation. Because what is a navigation? It's a list, an unordered list 
of links, consisting of a bunch of list items. We simply don't like the way it looks. All right? That's our problem. We don't like the way it looks. So, the issue then that we want to fix is not take it out of the list, but make the list look the way that we want to. And again, I don't expect you to get everything that I'm covering. I, what I want to emphasize is the fact that just about everything on the screen, the way it looks, we can control via CSS. So, let's say I want to get rid of the bullet points. All right. That happens to be list style of none. And again, how do I know that? I know that because I've done that a million times. All right. With CSS, as in many programming languages, the style sinks in and you, and you memorize it and you, and you know it. The stuff you don't do as frequently, like for example, let's say I wanted the bullet point to be an image. And you can do that. You could, you could pick a little icon image and make your list items have that as a bullet point instead of the dot. I don't remember how to do that because I don't do that very often. But I can do that and I look it up. So part of it is like knowing where to look. All right. In this case, I want to format an unordered list. So if I look at, if I do a, a Google search for something like CSS UL, top one on the list, no bullet, but I could look for that and it will show me all the things that I can style with that. List style type, circle, square, up Roman. That's how you do an image, by the way. And somewhere down the line, there, it tells me that one of my options is none. All right. So we do this, save it, look at it, and we got rid of the bullet points. Now, if I look at this, Notice it seems like there's a lot of real estate wasted. It's going down and pushing it down, pushing the other content down, meaning that the user would have to scroll to get to more content. And there's a whole bunch of space over here that could be used. It would seem to make sense that I would want these to be horizontal rather than vertical. By default, LI tags are block tags. They go horizontally, or I'm sorry, they, they stack on top of each other vertically. Horizontally, they go all the way across the screen. I can change that. I can tell it not to act like a block tag, but instead act like an inline tag. And the way I do that is, I can say li display inline. we move those then that way. Hmm. They're awful close together. What could we do to fix that? The spacing and how do we do that? Pardon me? <laughs> space bar ain't going to help, right? We put the space in there. How about padding? And I could say padding 10 pixels. Get pushed over that way. Now, notice that this isn't the color that I specified for this. So uh, the links are not the color. The links aren't black like I specified. It is, um, is blue. Why? Because that's the default. Actually, I didn't specify any colors for the text. That's so they're blue. So I can make these be any color simply by going a color. Let's make them white. And how can I get rid of the underline? 
text, decoration, none. Again, I don't expect you to memorize these, but become aware that for everything on the page, there are so many properties that we can change. So that's what I'm trying to sort of get you to realize. And then I can say, what else do I want to say? Um, let's make them bigger. But I'm going to do 1.2 EM. EM or M. <laughs> All good answers, but not right in this context. Emphasis, right. So 1.2M would mean what? 1.2 times how big it normally is. So like 20% bigger than the, the, the normal size. So I go and do this, and there we go. Now notice how I haven't done tons of stuff, and yet, doesn't look bad. Now, one thing I will say is these links are hard to read. All right? They're real hard here. They, I, I can still read them on the screen. I didn't intend to talk about this now, but now is as good a time of talking about it, is I can change the selector. All right? What? Yeah. By changing the selector, I can be more specific about what links I want to look a certain way. So if I simply say A, that says every link on the page is going to look this way. I can say nav space A, and that will change, the, that, will, that changes the selector to say only the A's in the nav section. And now we're back to where these, I still don't like the blue, so I could do this. Nav, or I'm sorry, A, I could do color black, font weight, bold. All right. So, Every link on the page I style this way, but remember, this is more specific. So this, the links in the navigation section, get that. So we've gone with just a handful of style rules from something that is um, very plain to something that, you know, is starting to look like a completed web page. Now, I said last time that we're not going to put our style code in the HTML page because if I did that and then pasted my other page. pasted that same CSS code in my page. Both the pages kind of look the same. All right. Remember that second page isn't as elaborate. All right. Um, as the first one. Let me go in and, and add the Let me make them look, make them have more similar HTML so that they look more similar.
All right, so now they look more similar. All right. What if I decide to go and change the color of the page to blue? Well, it's going to be real hard for one thing. But I'd have to change it there and there. All right. A great programming principle is the DRY principle that does not relate to not drinking beverages next to your computer, although that's a good idea also. Anyone care to hazard a guess what DRY stands for? <laughs> I like that too, but it's not mine. DRY your programming. That means don't have duplicated code. Don't be redundant, nor should you repeat yourself unnecessarily. That was a joke. All right. <laughs> All right. So we've repeated ourselves. We have an identical block of code in two places. What's wrong with that? If we change it in one place, we have to change it in another. Now, what, what is wrong with that? Well, it's more effort, right? Maintainability. Maintainability, exactly. All right. Two things. One is that it's more work to do it. Two is that you're more prone to error and inconsistencies, you know. And I just changed the one color. Could you imagine if I went from a blue, or I'm sorry, from a greenish color scheme to a red color scheme or a blue color scheme? There'd be a whole bunch of things I need to change with this code. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in its own file. All right? So I'm going to go. And I'm going to copy the style. Actually, I'm going to cut and paste it in this file. I'm going to get rid of the stock tags. Why do I do that? Well, it indicates to the HTML. This is not HTML, CSS code. Tags or our stuff in there so is not mixed with the HTML. So we don't use a stop to tell the HTML page um, that, um, that this is not HTML code. I'm going to go ahead and save it as, and I'm going to put it in my folder. I'm going to put it in the same folder as the web pages. Again, I, it doesn't have to be. Sort of the same rules apply when you're talking about images as with these. But I'm going to go and put this in here. And I'm going to call dot c dot CSS. All right. Now, typically dot CSS is the file extension that you use to indicate a style sheet file. So. You don't have to, but again, it, it's a sort of a standard thing to do. So I'm going to go and save it there. So now I stop its own file. I simply have to tell this HTML page and my other HTML page where to get the style from. And you do that through a link tag. Now this is like an href link where you click on it. Or, I'm sorry, like a, like a hyperlink where you click on it and go somewhere else. There will be an href property, but um, it's not that sort of link. It's a link that says, hey, here's where you find my style. And 
And let's see if I remember this. Whoops. If hard pressed, I couldn't tell you exactly why you have to do both of these things, other than to say, I remember you, you got to do both of them. I don't really remember the reasoning behind it. But they tell the browser, this is style code that you're bringing in here. All right? There actually is other things that you can put in. You can put alternative style sheets and so on and so forth. All right? But those two things together, and I'm not sure why you need both of them, but those two things together tell the browser, this is where you're getting your style sheet from. So again, because of that, we no longer have to put the style tags in our code, just the style rules. So let me save this, make sure it works. It does. Version, I can right mouse and view the page source, and it has the link in it, not the style code. All right, and now put it on the second page. Place the style tags with that. Still works. Now, if I want to go and change something in the style, if I want to make the background of the page black, for example, I could type in the word black because that's one of the recognized names. What else could I type in? Zero, 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 zero. I also can type in 000. That's sort of a shorthand if all the pair, uh, if the two numbers in each pair has the same value. I don't like to do that, but sometimes you see people doing that, so I thought I'd explain it to you. And, yeah. It's a good way to hide spoilers, make the, <laughs> make the text and that. Uh, but the thing is, is I messed it up, but guess what? I messed up both pages. So this allows you to mess up your whole website in one shot. All right? That's the bad news. The good news is I could go and correct it in one shot. I actually kind of like this. Yeah, it looks very clean. And again, it's not very complicated, and the good news is, is I change this in two places. And therefore, both pages get this. Excellent question. I was, I was hoping no one would, would notice that. Um, so that'll be our cliffhanger for Tuesday. No. The reason is, is I don't have that in a, in a list. Yeah, and you know, realize that about 30 seconds before you ask that question, because I was sitting here thinking, like, why is that? But if I, can I put the padding on the li, so there's no on this one because it's not in a list. But if we put that there. Now the navigation looks more uniform. All right. Now, throughout this class, and, and this is most relevant for people that have done some web development before, depending on when you've done it. Um, I may comment if you put in, for example, a BR tag, a break tag. And say, don't use a break tag. All right. Most of the time, you don't want to use a break tag. Why? Because that's an HTML tag that all it does is it changes the appearance of the page. 
Most of the time when you use a break tag, like if you put breaks between paragraphs to like space out the paragraphs, you could do that by putting a bottom margin via CSS. Why is that a big deal? Why am I being so difficult about that? Because the break tag is something that's in the HTML. If you had one to go and change it to make it consistent throughout the site, you have to change all the as opposed to put it in a style, you can change all of them in one shot. So the, the, the best, uh, uh, the other famous example of this is back in the old, old days, if anyone did web development, they used tables for the layout. All right? Now, that seemed to be a good idea at the time because there was no other way to get a nice little grid on your page because CSS was a little dodgy back then. All right? But now that the CSS issues are out of the way, CSS is a much better way. And by, not, by using tables, that locks you into a certain structure, locks you into a grid structure. By not using that, and by using the styled position things, and we'll, we'll spend a lot of time talking about using CSS to position things, all right, you have more flexibility. I want to leave you today with a site that is a great site, and it's a great example to show you what you can do with CSS, because the principle of this site is this. They took an HTML file, one HTML file, then they let a bunch of people create CSS sheets for it just to show you how different you can make the same HTML look. All right? And that is CSS Zen Garden. All right, here is the home page for this. And just let's take benchmarks of certain things on the page. CSS Zen Garden, the beauty of CSS design. All right. A demonstration of what can be accomplished through CSS design. Downloads this example, the road to enlightenment, and so on. Let's go and look at some other design. That is the same HTML page. Only thing that changed was the CSS file. And we can point to different pieces of it and we can see. There's your CSS Zen Garden going upwards. The beauty of CSS design, a demonstration of what can be accomplished. Download the examples, the road to enlightenment. CSS Zen Garden. CSS Zen Garments, interesting. A demonstration of what can be done, and so on. Well, let's look at a robot named Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy looks so happy. <laughs> Under the sea? Orchids? Okay. The point of this is, is with a single HTML file, by applying different CSS, you can make your site look wildly different. What we've done now, then, is we've taken our CSS code, put it in a different file so we can change our entire site to make it look wildly different. And what we'll do next time is we'll play with that. We'll take and we'll play with some examples and say, what if I do this? What if I do that? And it won't just change the one page, but it'll change both the pages. And if it's good when there's two pages to change, it's great when there's 10 and excellent when there's 100 and so on down the line. All right. Again, I don't expect you, <coughs> excuse me, I don't expect you to memorize all the, HT, uh, all the CSS attributes I went over. The idea is more like to sort of open you up to realizing just how much you can address via CSS. And by playing around with it and trying to do different stuff, 
you can discover some of these. And again, like I said, the ones that you use often, you'll get to understand and, and memorize. The ones that you don't do so, use so often, at least you know that the capability is there and you can look up to see the details. All right. Have a good weekend. Any questions in North Ridgeville? We okay? All right. We'll have a good weekend. We'll see you on Tuesday.